We've already worked with one kind of transmission, which is the rack and pinion, and here we're going to work with two more, gears and levers. The same principles apply of equal and opposite reaction forces and shared displacements for points of contact. And we really want to emphasize deriving the relationship between these things using these principles rather than trying to memorize formulas for uh, how the, uh, the gear amplifies torques. So let's do an example. Uh, here we have two uh, rotational uh, gears, and we don't show the gear teeth, but we're going to understand that when we show this that there's rolling without slipping between the, the two sides of the gear. We're going to apply a torque on one gear, and then we're going to have a damper on the other gear. And I want to emphasize that on the first one, omega-1, there's no inertia shown, and so if it's not shown, you can just assume it's going to be zero. Whereas for the lower gear, we do have an inertia J. Our job is to find the differential equation with input torque T and output omega 2. So let's try to draw our expanded free body diagram. And uh, the first thing I'm going to show is the equal and opposite ground reaction forces, Fg, where I've just drawn in, drawn in the directions arbitrarily. And as long as they're equal and opposite, uh, this is always going to work. The other thing I'm going to draw in are shared velocities, which I'll call V1 and V2. If these two sides of the gear are rolling without slipping on each other, then they, the two points of contact have to have the same velocity. And then the other thing that I'm missing is I'm missing the damper. And then the way I'm going to draw that in is I'm going to just shade in a, a 3D effect uh, to help make it clear what direction we're defining things in. And then I'm going to draw in a little drag cup damper attached to ground, where the rotation is zero. And according to my arrow definition here, I need to call this omega 2, with the element law, law Tb is equal to b times negative omega 2 minus zero. OK, let's uh, first talk about the shared velocities. So we know v1 is equal to v2. This is shared velocities. And V1 is just going to be equal to omega 1 times R1, whereas V2 is negative omega 2 times R2. So immediately we have one relationship that allows us to uh, understand how omega 1 and omega 2 are related to each other. The next step is we want to sum the torques on omega 1. Here we have zero inertia times omega 1 dot is equal to the sum of the torques, capital T, plus Fg times R1. So this tells us that Fg is equal to negative T divided by R1. That's another equation that we use to understand our gear relationship. Finally, let's sum the torques on omega 2, where we have an inertia J times omega 2 dot is equal to the sum of torques, which is Fg times R2, the moment of the uh, gear reaction force, plus Tb, which is the torque that comes from our um, rotational damper. If we substitute in, Tb is just negative B omega 2, and collect terms, we get J omega 2 dot plus B omega 2 is equal to Fg times R2, but we, uh, Fg we know from above, so we get negative R1 over R2 times capital T. So that gives us the differential equation with omega 2 as output and capital T, T as input. We can also examine a lever. In this case, what we have is a lever with moment arms D1 and D2 and two forces that are applied, F1 and F2. And uh, the velocities of the two ends of the lever are actually not equal. In fact, we expect them to be unequal because we can have two unequal moment arms here that are going to determine those. Instead, the shared displacement that we're interested in is actually the rotation. So both ends of the lever share in the same rotation, which is described simply from V1 is equal to omega 1 times D1, and V2 is equal to negative omega 1 times D2. So we have two equations, and we can actually divide one by the other. So that gives us the ratio V1 over V2 is equal to 
negative d1 over d2. So that's one of our relationships. The other relationship we can make is, again, summing the torques on the lever. And what that gives us is F1 times D1 minus F2 times D2 is equal to J times omega 1, where J is the moment of inertia of the lever. And again, this is often zero. We'll tell you when it's not zero, and otherwise you can just assume that the lever has zero mass. The key to the way we're deriving these relationships is it's based on two principles, equal and opposite forces and shared displacements. And I think that's a better way to go about this than to try to memorize formulas for levers because it's hard to remember what the sign convention is in that formula. So when we just think about the forces and the shared displacements, it doesn't matter what the definition of the signs is. As long as we follow the principles, things will work out fine. Another way you can think about these relationships is that uh, the total power into a lever should be equal to zero. It has no way of dissipating any energy. So we would have the power going in of F1 times V1 and F2 times V2. Both of these simultaneously go in, and then that has to equal zero for a, um, if it's massless. If it's not massless, then actually this power also goes into uh, increasing the kinetic energy of the lever.